Hi, and welcome to painting another peel off with Jay Robinson Art. Today we're going to be painting a very simple, very easy, very fun little clownfish. So let me show you what we're going to be painting today. This is an idea of what the painting could look like. And I always like to start off by saying that because when you're creating art, you can always deviate. You never have to stick with a game plan. Sometimes freedom of expression creates some of the most wonderful works of art. So again, I always like to preface it with this. I'm going to show you an idea of how to paint this type of picture. You can take it to any level that you want to. And I suggest that you let yourself be free, have some fun, and push around a few colors. So let's get started. Basically what we have here is we have an 8x10 canvas with our peel-off image on it. We have an apron that we've supplied for you, paper towel that I use to clean my brushes. These are the two brushes we're going to be working with today that come with the kit. But remember, if you have your own equipment, please feel free to use it. As a matter of fact, it probably would be best because you're more comfortable with that. So basically we have a nice flat brush and we have a pointed brush. And I'm calling it that because I don't want to get too technical. Then we have a spatula, it's plastic. This is going to help us to peel off our peel off image when that time comes. We have a canvas palette sheet, which is right here. The glossy side up is what you want. I like to tape mine to the table. And then we have our packet of colors, which I'll get into in a second. Off camera, I have my cup of water. I also like to put my canvas on a backing so that it doesn't spoil the table, unless of course your table is your painting element. So let's look at our colors. Now they may seem like a lot, but don't let that intimidate you. Don't let anything that we're gonna do intimidate you in any way, shape or form. We have blue, phthalo blue. We have black, which is an ivory black. We have a fluorescent pink. We have green, we have white, we have orange, and we have a little raw sienna. Now again, this may seem like a lot of colors, but I want to make the water a little colorful. And we're going to try and show you how you can emulate what I previously showed you, even if we don't actually paint that exact same image. We're basically just trying to put some movements and some colors into the water so that our clownfish is the star of the story. So why don't we just move some of these colors to the side that we don't readily need right away. I'm one of those types that I like to put colors out slowly as needed and not necessarily just because. So I'm going to basically start with these two colors right now. I'll show you how you do this. You take the packet, you just pop it open. I like to squeeze out just a little bit of color like so. That should be enough to start me out. If I need more, I can always go back. And then what I'm gonna put is a little bit of white. And this is gonna help start our background. Okay. That's a good start. We're gonna be working with the flat brush to begin with. You know what, as a matter of fact, let's also put out just a tiny little bit of pink. Yeah, I can see that coming into play really fast in the painting. Put that to the side. Now let's get started. First, I'm going to work in this area over here. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be kind of randomizing some color. And it's going to be basically composed of uh, blue and white to kind of give me some atmosphere. I'm going to splash a little pink in this corner. And then I'm going to create a little hill. And you, you'll see as we go. So. Don't think that because I'm moving fast that you have to move this fast. Remember, it's a video. Thank goodness that we posted it on YouTube so that you could always go to it, pause it, and rewind it. And don't forget to subscribe to our J. Robinson Art YouTube channel so you can see more of these wonderful peel-off paintings. Here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Now, I'm just going to put the white on the canvas. I'm just going to scrub it because it's random. It's not trying to paint anything in particular. But I want the white to immediately start to break down that blue when I introduce it, which would be about now. And I'm only going to grab just a tiny, tiny bit because I just want to introduce like a very, very light blue in this little corner over here, this little corner of the sea. 
As a matter of fact, let me hit some more white to it. Just the beauty of painting. If you add too much color, white is a great color to have to help you break it back down. See? That's what I want. I just want some atmospheric, light variation of a blue tone, mostly kind of in the lighter, lighter, whiter category. You know, and I'm just scrubbing the brush. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Three men in the tub. See? There you go. There you go. I'm just softening this up a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. And before we go too far, let's take and splash some of that color over here, some white. Not cleaning the brush yet. No water's needed. I like the colors to kind of mix together by themselves. Some of the most beautiful things happen that way. So here we go. We're just going to splash it around a little bit. Now again, I'm just going to grab a tiny, tiny little bit and create a little atmosphere. Let's go a little tiny bit more. There you go. There you go. Now this is just, who knows, some, some light, some ambiance. It's the ocean. We don't really know what goes on in the deep. We're not Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> We're just artists trying to have some fun. Okay, so here, this is good. This is good. I'm going to come back in a little while and add some more pink right in this corner over here. But now I want to go back into some white and this time directly pick up some blue because I want a slightly darker version, kind of cascading around here. And if you notice, the peel off is there to protect the image. So you don't have to worry about it. You just paint right over it. As a matter of fact, I strongly suggest that when you use a peel-off painting, you don't show the peel any respect. You just paint right over it. Let it play hide and seek. This is nice and strong, so let me add a little bit of white to it. I don't want to take my pink out completely, but I do want it to blend right over here with this blue. Oh, yeah. Starting to come together now, Jack. Oh yeah, I know this looks crazy, it looks chaotic, but in the end, it's all going to make sense. So all you have to do is just allow me to dance with you on the canvas, follow my lead, and don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. Yeah, here we go. Now we're just going to keep pushing this around. There you go. I'm just making sure I lighten it up to, to the value that I want, so don't think that I'm doing anything fantastic here. I'm not. I like that strongness of that blue right there. I'm going to leave that. But now I'm going to introduce a lot more color kind of quickly. And I want to lighten this up just a smidget. There you go. There you go. That looks good. I like for these two to blend together like you don't even know where one color stops and the next color starts. There you go. That looks good. Ooh, yeah. Our fish is enjoying himself already. We're not even done yet. So I'm just going to come down, maybe try to show you with a blue line. I don't want to really make it strong. I'm going to try to show you where I'm going to come down to. I'm going to probably paint the gully of this area right here like that. Just, just because. That's the shape I'm, I'm looking to try to mimic with this brush right now. Yeah, this is good. It seems like it might take a little while to get here, but the journey is well worth it because while you're doing this, you're actually learning some things. You're learning how to blend color, how to push paint around, how to not create hard lines by adding white right on top of color to soften it up so that it doesn't appear too strong of a line because we're not trying to draw lines. We're trying to paint color. Just color splotches is really what we're after. So by introducing the value of blue, and blue is a strong color, you don't need a lot. Then we can push it around a little bit. Have some fun. Clownfish are an interesting fish, you know. They swim in the coral sea. Um, I think there was a, a, a cartoon movie with Ellen DeGeneres as a, as a clownfish. I believe it was Nemo or something like that. It's been a while. I know. I know. I might have watched it because I like. I like animated movies for the artistic value that it brings me. You know, a lot of artists spend a lot of time creating those characters and bringing them to life for you on the screen, and it's still a form of art. And I appreciate all forms of art. So here, I'm just gonna quickly block this in. 
just to give the effect. I'm trying not to leave no empty canvas. So long as there's some paint on it, even if it's white paint, it's better than a raw canvas. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Now, remember I promised I was going to go back in this corner. So before I do, let me introduce a little white. I'm going to just go with a little bit of a stronger pink value. Now, now I'm going to introduce a slightly stronger value of blue just in that very corner to look like the light's coming from there or something. Who knows? There. That's, that's about good. I could always touch it up again later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating what I'm going to call some of this underwater coral. Ooh, forgive me. Some of this underwater coral or underwater scenery. So I'm going to try to to mimic that and please excuse me I hit the camera so I'm gonna take a slightly stronger value of blue stronger than this one now I'm gonna take the brush and hold it straight up and down because I am gonna try to draw in some of a rocky shape so let's just say this is gonna be the edges or the top part of our coral we're just gonna let that sink right there like that there now that tells me that this is the top of it and now we're going to bring it down. We can leave that a little bit of a hard line. So we're just going to bring it down by introducing a nice rich value like this. See how I'm staying right in my shape? Because all of this down here is going to get really dark. And then we're going to... A little thunder and lightning going on today. So now we're just going to add a little bit more value down here to start building up what we can call underwater rocks. Okay, here we go. Just let that fade off right there. Now this is more of the area that I wanna put a more solid value to. So we're just gonna keep bringing that down a bit till we can get the values exactly how we want them. See, this is coming out nicely. Show you something in a second. Oh yeah. Da 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 da. See, we're creating a whole scene here. It may, again, it may seem like it's taking a long time, but it's not. And again, it, it really depends on the type of brushes that you use. And because of our kits and trying to make things very affordable and economical, we provided a brush. But again, you can always bring your own equipment into play and it'll, it'll knock this area out a little bit faster. But I'm just showing you that even with the equipment, you're gonna get a nice rendering. It's only fair. I have like a ton of brushes, but it's better if I use the brush provided to you so that this way you can see you can get a rendering off. Now this, I'm just gonna fake and pull this down just a little bit. Let me show you what we did, even though you kinda don't see it. Okay, now watch this. Now you see these ridges right here? This is gonna be another one of these type of underwater scenes, but we're gonna use a different color for that. And the color we're gonna use for that, as a matter of fact, let's, let's put out some green now. I think it's time to introduce another color to the underwater scene. So we're just gonna squeeze out a small amount of green right there, and we'll be using that in a few moments. But right now, I'm gonna show you something. See this pink? This pink is actually composed of some red. So if you mix that with the blue, you'll get a very, very nice purple. And with that purple, you could come here and create a nice purple shape, almost like the one we did up there, but it doesn't have to be the same shape because it adds to the eye when it's different. If everything looks the same, then the eye doesn't get to move around and create the image that we see in our minds. That's what they mean by the mind's eye. Now I'm gonna take some white because I just wanna soften this up just a little bit. But I wanna bring it down at the same time. Look at that. How beautiful is that? You didn't know you had so many colors on your palette, did you? We already started with a lot and we created purple just by introducing a little bit of pink into some blue and we ended up getting a very, very nice purple. We're gonna come over here. Now for this, I'm gonna run this purposely like this. 
And just stay with me. I'm gonna leave this top like that. Come over here. Now, with the negative space, and negative space is this white stuff down here. I'm gonna create something else and then come back and show you how to fill that in. So I'm gonna take a little bit more pink, some of this blue, introducing a little white to it. Ooh, that's a very nice color. Cleaning off my brush. Wipe it on a paper towel. Take some of this pink. Get back to the color that we were originally working with, or the variation thereof. And then we're just going to start pulling some of this in here. Ooh, that looks nice, too. That looks nice, too. That looks nice. There you go. See that? Just to add some value. Now I'm going to take some of this green. And you notice I'm not cleaning off my brush because I like the colors to mix together a little bit. And I'm just going to splash some of that right in front of this rock formation. Join it with this new pinkish purple color that we just created. And it almost looks like you have three or four different planes going here. And that's that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to introduce color to help show separation under the water. Okay, now let's take some of this over here. And before we add some more of this purple, let's put some green back in this area, a little bit darker. Just right in here, we're just gonna splash in some shapes. You can pull up like this, a little grassy things underneath the water, seaweeds and what have you. They, they are under there and they look fine. Just gonna splash some of this. Now I'm just going to bring this down in the back just a little bit to about right there. there. That's good. That's very noticeable. And now we're going to go back and create a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, and a little bit of purple. I mean pink. So we could create a purple. Yeah. And then over here, we're just going to put in some of this color. See, they don't have to be the same. It could be like a whole bunch of different designs and shapes and colors in our ocean. And that's what I meant when I said a variation. We don't have to copy the exactness of the painting. I mean, you can, it's a good challenge, but you don't have to. You can be creative, be loose. Just add some colors to give a feel of color. Look at that, that looks good. Look at that, look at all of those different colors going on down there. As a matter of fact, let's introduce one more. This is going to be the raw sienna. We're almost getting to our clownfish in a few seconds, so the pH of resistance is about to happen. I'm just introducing color. Let's take some of this sienna, and let's just scrub some of that in there. It's going to pick up on that purplish color. Maybe it'll get a hint of green to it. But we're just adding a different value to this side of the painting. This is where I had those purple corals. I mean, those uh, sienna corals were over here in the original painting. But again, we're just showing you a very quick and easy way. You know what? Let's go back and introduce some of this blue back into the painting now. Nice dark value. Let's, let's start back here. Like as if it's creeping up from behind. <laughs> and just let it sit. Oh yeah, that's nice. Let that sit right there just to break it up and introduce another value to the painting. Let that rock just kind of meander over. Neander, that's the word, right? Let it meander over. Oh yeah, that's good. As a matter of fact, I like that so much. I want to introduce a little bit of that on this side too. To help balance it out now. And I'm going to go in there a minute and do something different. But we're doing great. We're moving along. We're adding our colors. Oh, yeah, that looks good. And now I'm going to take some green. Put that back right in here. And green and blue is such a nice mix. But see, that's a darker, darker green value than the other one. So it makes it look a little bit different, which is what we want. We want a whole lot of differences in our ocean. Let's take some pink and let's reintroduce some of that. Let it do what it do. 
Ray Charles used to say that. Let it do what it do, baby. Here you go. And this is how you be creative. This is how you become an artist. Not allowing yourself to be held to one specific anything. It's the idea that you're trying to emulate in your mind's eye. You're looking at things and you're trying to make an interpretation artistically. Let's go back to this darker value of blue. Finish off this corner. Because blue is the complementary color to orange, believe it or not. So the fact that we have the blue in here, where we put that orange clownfish, bring him to life or her to life, She'll stand out even more when you have some of the blue in the painting that's really strong. It just plays against each other with the eye. Look at that. What, a, what an ocean scene we've got so far. And I say so far because we're not done yet. Let me show you something else. We're going to take this little skinny brush. Put it into the water. And we're just going to come over here and just pull in some color. Just trying to lighten that just a smidgen. And we're going to go right on the top up here, and we're just going to pull up some little things that are living in the ocean. Let me just get a little slicker. This time you may want a little bit of water to really stay in the brush this time to kind of act like ink. So that when you're doing this little, little move, little wiggle, 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 see? Just let it come up. doesn't have to be anything particular. We're just pulling up some little lines and letting them wiggle, letting them cross each other. And what we're doing here now is we're building some of the other living things in the ocean. Let's just go right off the canvas with that. I like to cut across things so that your eye, again, is not trying to make sense of everything. That's when a painting is really good, when you allow your eye to just be free, let it flow, flow freely. Let's come over here. Let's do a little bit more over here. We got some time. And I'm just taking a brush and I'm just drawing a line and wiggling a little bit. So if, you're, if you've been shaky or feel like you're not steady, this is definitely for you. Because you just let it go. Just And again, you want the paint to be a little slick so a little water doesn't hurt at this point. Not a whole lot. You don't want it too soupy. But you do want it to be able to raise right up and slide right off. So here we go. See that? This is good. Let's cross over. Little Allen Iverson, little crossover. That looks nice. That looks nice. And I like to do this too. You see the clownfish is there? Let's do one or two that kind of go behind him and come back. So when he gets painted, you get to see some of this stuff growing in his background that's a lot that's pretty good that's pretty good now i'm gonna do the same thing with the green let's just slick the brush up a little bit go into some green color let's just come over on this side and we're just going to pull up some green color lines now you could spend hours and hours and hours in this ocean creating all of these little lines and shapes and forms and that's good though that's good because the more you add the more interesting it becomes you know they don't have to be perfect or the same or the same darkness or the same width you know you just want to put some stuff in there to let the eyes just roam around yeah that looks good let's do some pink why not right why not is that some pink to that slick some of that pink up a little bit Let's just let's just say some pink is growing right here. It doesn't have to come off of something pink to be in the picture, does it? No. See? An introduction of color, an introduction of a shape just adds to the painting. There you go. Look at that. It just gives more depth. Let's come right across here. Put some pink. And then right across here, put some pink. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. That's really good. Let's come a little closer to us. Let's come right into this area here. 
and just pull some stuff up. Yeah, see? Look at that. How cool is that? Now we've taken a lot of time to get our background right. So the video is going to be slightly longer than normal, but you are going to be able to create something really, really nice. And that's all that's important. So however long it takes, it's fine by me. There you go. See, just some things. Now, when you look at this, you don't look at any one particular one. You, you kind of like, your eye is just going all over the place. And if you focus on one or two of them, it might look a little weird. But when your eyes are looking at the painting overall, it doesn't see any one particular one. All it sees is a whole bunch of things. And that's kind of what we wanted to indicate. That's what we were trying to do. We were just trying to make you have as much stuff in your water as possible. Cleaning off my brush because I think I want to add some green stuff over here too. Just a couple. Just a couple. Just to be in the picture on this side. Just a couple. Now we're going to move into the pH 3 resistance, which is the clownfish. But before we start the clownfish, we're going to squeeze out a little color. We're going to take the black. We definitely don't need a lot of black. And we're not going to be using a lot in, in the total picture, but let me show you some tricks at the end. Right now I'm just going to tap this. That's all I need. I'm going to take this black. And there's a couple of places on the clownfish that I want to give credence that right here in his mouth area, there's a little bit of an opening. So I want to paint over that. Okay. And we'll come back and we'll add a dot right there for an eye later. And we'll add the color. But I just wanted to get that little bit of a spot. That was to help you out. So you wouldn't have to find it later. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and peel off our image. And how you take a peel off off, you can use the spatula that I provided for you for safety, or you could have yourself an X-Acto knife, and either one works fine. You could use a butter knife or blunt instrument. And what you're looking for is any part of the painting that you can get under, like this, see? See how I've gotten under that fin area? Now that I've peeled that, I can start the peel off. And the peel off will reveal the silhouetted image of our clownfish. And because we have this silhouetted image, this next part is going to be really, really easy. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some orange and we're going to create patterns and shapes of patterns for our clownfish. I'll probably use both brushes to try to go fast for you. Let me just let me just clean this off. Save time. Here we go. So we have our two brushes. Now I'm gonna show you how to work this shape of the clownfish. Just pay attention to what I'm doing and it'll all make sense. First, let's start at the tail. We're going to be giving this a chance to dry. We're going to be working from the back of the tail forward. And all we're going to be doing is first showing where we want to paint. So I'm going to put a shape right here like that. And right here like that. Like a little, almost like a, a kind of an odd shape V. This back area is what I'm going to be painting. And I'm going to be painting it all orange. I just wanted to show where I'm going to stop. So I'm going to take this big brush and I'm just going to fill in the white area up to and not exceeding the line that I made. So I'm just going to take my time, turn the brush slowly, drive right into the tail and get that. I'm not going to worry about that dot. And then I'm just going to fill it in. And even though it doesn't have the black on it yet, there's the start of my clownfish tail. Now I'm going to show you how to do 
the second part of the body shape of the clownfish. We're gonna leave white open. So from the back fin, I'm gonna come in this direction, kind of make a little circular shape and say, okay, there's part one, there's line one, and then here, you see where the fin ends? Right there, I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit, and I'm gonna say that it goes just like that. Now this part is, um, is what I'm gonna paint all orange. So you get any idea? Let's just start up here. I know it's hard for my hand to be in the way, but my voice, you should be listening to what I'm saying and mimic what I'm doing. I'm just gonna fill all of this in. So I'm here to here. I'm not gonna go beyond this line or beyond this line. So even if my hand covers, I'm just painting into the same shape, trying to maintain that shape. See, I'm trying to maintain that same shape. And I'm just gonna fill this in like that. See? And there's part number two almost completed. If you go a little off like I did back there, don't don't panic. It's it's just fine. Maybe it's a maybe that's a dot of a very distant fish. Who knows? <laughs> Make stuff up. There. Now we have the tail and that midsection. So now we're gonna go to shape number three. There's only two more shapes left. Shape number three and shape number four. Here's a top fin. I'm gonna cut in maybe right here. Then I'm gonna say it kind of goes like this. And then I'm just gonna fake a fin here. I'm just gonna take the brush and I'm just gonna make a kind of a circular shape and say there's the fin and I'm gonna connect it right there because I am gonna paint that so I'm not worried. I don't have to put a line there. I'm just trying to show you stopping lines. And now for the head. Just a little bit in front of here, I'm just gonna make a, almost like a, like a small C shape like an arc, there. Now that right there is gonna be body shape number three. And if you follow me, you, you're starting to see this clownfish come to life, aren't you? You see, I'm just gonna keep moving forward, keep moving forward. I'm gonna to try to keep this video under an hour. So, you know, it's a video, so it's, it's like a class. So you, you, you're actually in class right now. Sometimes class runs long. It depends on the lesson. This, this lesson is a little bit of a different lesson. And by the way, for those of you who are painting this and you call yourself having never painted before, this is actually in the advanced area of class painting because of so much background and different colors and shapes in the water and the detail we're adding to the clownfish. So if this is your first painting, you went from never painting before to advanced. <laughs> so congratulations on the challenge. Now I'm just gonna try to very carefully maintain my shape, taking my time and paint that area right there. And now for the last orange shape, we're gonna paint the front of the head. I need a nice white line separating the front of the head and this part of the body. So I'm gonna take the brush and all I'm really looking to do is keep me a nice white line like that. And that'll be the head. So no matter what, this is the head of my fish right there. Now I'm just gonna paint this part in. And I'm only using a little tiny brush in this area because remember that black that we made for the mouth? I don't wanna lose it for you. So I'm gonna paint around it and once I get enough paint around it, now I'll go back to the flat brush to quickly block this in. Do you know that we're almost finished? Do you know that you've almost completed your very first clownfish? For those of you who are painting for the first time, just soften this color. I'm just taking some of the color down. There you go. And there's our clownfish shape. And now, let's decorate them. The decoration part is easy. All we're going to do is take some of this black on that same pointed brush 
and we're just going to draw black lines around our shapes. I'm going to come to the head last. So let's go here and work backwards. I'm just going to put a line right here. And then I'm going to maybe put a line under here. And then I'm going to put a line. See how I'm just riding the line right along the edges of the fish itself. So you can put a little line right there. And maybe this one I'm going to stop right there. I don't have to draw an outline over the entire fish. And I'll tell you why afterwards. Put some color there. Put this back fin. I definitely want a line. And maybe this turns the corner, but it doesn't touch. Now let's go to the back part. This one, I'm going to go all the way down, drawing a line right along the edge. See, see, it's starting to come together now. You can't tell me you can't paint. Peel off is a wonderful way to explore painting. It is the easiest way for anyone, whether you have painted before or if you've never painted before, to be able to paint and have some fun exploring your creativity. I'm going to put a thick line there and a little thin one right there. I'm going to come to the back over here. Now I'm picking and choosing where I want my lines to touch and not touch. And again, I'll explain that to you right after we finish. But let's get this part done because this is the wrap up. Now to the back tail. I'm actually going to go all the way around it. So just going to go like that. Just gonna go like that. And now we're gonna come up to the front head part. Now I'm gonna show you something. We're just gonna take and arc this part in the front. And we're not gonna go around the front of the mouth because we have black there to show the mouth. Just gonna clean up this line a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna clean off my brush for a second. Because the last thing we need to do is take a little bit of white and we're just going to create an eye spot right there. So we're just going to draw a little circular shape that's going to be the eye right there. You see that? That's the fish's eye. And in that eye, we're going to take a tiny dot of black and we're just going to come and go but let me just put the eye socket part and then boop. And there's the eye to our clownfish. Not bad, right? Now you could take a tiny bit of white and you could paint some lines in the back of the tail like this. Just to show some of those back fins. You could take and put a little white right over this arc right over here. And that just adds a little bit more definition. We said that this was a fin, so we could put some little tiny lines right there to indicate that. And believe it or not, your clownfish painting is 100% complete. Well, I hope you had a good time painting with me today. I know I did. I always enjoy having some fun, pushing around a few colors, and being creative. And as a reminder, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, J. Robinson Art. And don't forget to also give a like if you like this painting. It just helps. It's not necessary, but it just, it just helps. And remember, this is a variation here. Let me show you the previous one so you can get an idea. This was the one that's on the package, and this is the one that we that showed in the beginning, and this is the one we painted today. So you could always take some black and put holes in these little corals <laughs> to make it look like they're funnels. You could add more background. You could do a variety of things. And the reason I didn't connect all of the lines is because in art, sometimes you want the viewer to connect the lines for you in their mind. They'll think they see something that's really there, but it's not. They put it all together because we're logic thinkers. And sometimes in art, you can be creative that way and allow the viewer to put the rest of the painting together for you. They'll see things that you didn't actually put in it 
and that helps your painting look more real and better and more comfortable to them because we're humans and that's what we like to do. We like to analyze things. That's why I like the random patterns so your eyes can't analyze a specific pattern. So anyway, I had a good time and I'll talk to you next time and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.